What's up guys, my name is Michael Westbrook. As always, thank you for checking out this video. Today we're talking about DIs and more specifically, we're talking about using DIs with what I'm calling modern small format modelers. That's stuff like the Strymon Iridium or the Walrus ACS-1. We're gonna talk about what a DI does and why in most cases you should be using a DI or something similar. We're also gonna talk about something that I recently got and that's the Deso Plus from Pinstripe Pedals. We're gonna talk about how this differs slightly from a regular DI and why I think it does a better job than a run of the mill DI for these small format modelers. A couple of things before we start, we are going to get into some tech talk about how DIs work, um, just so you can understand why you should be using one. But I'm going to try to simplify that as much as possible and make it as quick and painless as I can. The other thing is that you might have noticed this video is labeled paid promotion. I'm required to put that on here by YouTube because Pinstripe Pedals sent me the DSO Plus for free. I'm not being paid to make this video or for a positive review or anything, but because they send it to me for free, I have to put it on here. So just letting you guys know. All right, let's get into it. The big question is, why should you use a DI with your small format modeler? And I think that there are at least two super practical answers to this. One of which being just from the connection standpoint. Most of these small format modelers have unbalanced quarter inch outputs and most live and recording gear uses XLRs. Obviously, we need some way to go from quarter inch to XLR and a DI provides a great way to do that. The other reason is to protect your modeler. A lot of um, you know, live sound mixers as well as audio interfaces have the ability to send phantom power. And if you're not familiar with phantom power, it's basically 48 volts that is sent through XLR to help power microphones or even active DIs. Sending 48 volts to your modeler can potentially damage it or at the very least make it not sound as good. So using a DI is a way to protect your equipment and to make sure that it's going to sound as good as it possibly can. This is one of a couple of good reasons why you don't wanna just use an adapter to go from a TS to an XLR connection. The other has to do with the difference between balanced and unbalanced connections. Let's take a closer look at that. Here I've drawn out a diagram of a quarter inch cable, unbalanced cable here on top, and then on the bottom an XLR or a balanced cable. This would also include a TRS quarter inch cable that has tip, ring, and sleeve. So on the top here, we've got quarter inch. Inside of a quarter inch cable, there are two wires. We have the wire that carries our signal and then our ground wire. So this black little waveform right here is our guitar signal. And then as we go over here, I've drawn this to represent this uh, black and red line, kind of to represent any noise that would get picked up along the way. This is one reason why we want to not use any more cable than we really need to. It's just more susceptible to noise. So as we get it, you know through the cable these two combine and we get our output here which is going to have our original guitar signal plus any noise or interference that it picked up next we'll go down to our xlr or balanced cable and inside that cable we actually have three wires we have our ground wire again and then we have two other wires that carry our signal. Now, you'll notice that these waves are opposite each other, and that's because on a balanced output, we get our original signal, and then we get that signal duplicated, but the phase is swapped. Now, if you don't know this already, when you have the exact same signal, but you swap the phase on one of them, and you combine those signals, they actually null out or they cancel out, and so really all you would hear would just be complete silence. The signal passes through that cable like this out of phase and then along the way any noise or anything else it picks up interference that it picks up in this cable is represented here just like it would on the quarter inch. But then what happens at the output here is that the phase gets swapped again. And so when that is swapped at the end then these two are in phase and you'll hear the sound. But then the cool thing is that one of these gets swapped so the noise is actually out of phase with itself and it cancels out. So that's why we can get away with really long runs of XLR without it picking up any XX noise because it actually picks up that noise, but because of the phase canceling that happens at the end, it cancels out and we get a nice clean signal. 
Here's what happens when we use an adapter. Say we go from an unbalanced quarter inch cable, we use the adapter to go to XLR. Well, we have our signal passing on this first wire, then on our second and third, those both actually are ground. So any noise that we pick up, it ends up just coming out at the end, just like it would on an unbalanced cable. Even though it's an XLR, it's actually not truly balanced. There is one exception here. It's with the HX Stomp. The HX Stomp actually has balanced output. So if you're using an adapter, make sure that you get a TRS to XLR adapter. This ensures that you're going to keep that balanced output. You can also switch the output level to line level so that you're getting a nice strong signal to your mixer or interface. The last thing that I wanna mention about DIs and what they help us do is that they help ensure correct impedance matching. Now, I don't wanna to go too far into this and it's not always going to be a problem, especially with these modelers, but if you don't match your impedance levels correctly on your output and your input into whatever you're going into, it can cause problems with tone loss or loss of high end. So a DI ensures that your impedances are matched and everything sounds as it should. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that I think the DSO Plus does an even better job than a standard DI. It does everything that we've talked about up until this point. It gives us quarter inch in, balanced XLR outputs. It also gives us another set of quarter inch outputs to use as a patch bay on our pedal board. It's designed for guitarists to use specifically with modelers. But what makes it different? Well, first of all, it's not a DI at all. Pinstripe Pedals actually calls this a dual line isolator. I didn't realize this before getting the DSO Plus, but a DI actually drops your signal down. So say you're coming out of the Walrus ACS-1, your signal is up here. When it hits that DI, the DI actually brings the signal down. Then you go into a mixer or an audio interface and you use the preamp to bring that signal back up. So there are some unnecessary steps here. The DSO Plus maintains that signal all the way through and gives you a clean, pure signal. You'll notice right away when you plug it in that you'll get a lot more output and you won't have to crank your preamps as loud, which means less noise and a better sound. Another issue that I've run into with modelers and standard DIs is that the DIs just can't handle the output. Take something like the ACS-1. If you crank that output, it's actually going to start saturating the DIs and you're going to get some unnecessary coloration. The DSO Plus doesn't do this. It's high headroom and you get, again, that cleaner, purer sound. <laughs> Hopefully in that clip you can hear the differences. With the radial JDI, there's definitely some softening of the attack. That initial transient just seems kind of rolled off. And then there's some saturation. Uh, I hear it most in the low mids. Um, and it just doesn't sound as pure as the DSO Plus. The DSO Plus is super punchy and clear sounding. Um, again, pure is the word that comes to mind when I think of how the DSO Plus sounds. It just sounds very true to source. That's gonna do it for this one. As always, thank you for watching. A big thank you to Pinstripe Pedals for sending me the DSO Plus. I have been really happy with it and it's definitely gonna be my new go-to. Be sure to check the links in the description for more info on the DSO Plus, as well as my IRs that you heard in this video, HX Stomp presets, uh, my new course on creating and layering guitar parts. All of those are great resources for you as well as they help support the channel. All right, again, thank you for watching and until next time, I'll see you out there.